Kia ora and welcome to another episode of Rural New Zealand. I'm your host Scotty Benford. Join me as we go check out what's going on in the rural communities. On this week's episode we got on the train and we went to the Railway Tavern. We head down to Lincoln University, but first we find out the full growing process of the Akaroa Salmon. Just off the northern motorway is the Salmon Hatchery, producing thousands of salmon each year. This is one of our incubation systems, so when we get the, the fish that we saw outside and spawn them, the eggs will come into here, and it's actually chilled ball water, with the ball water coming out of the ground slightly too warm to incubate eggs with. Um, and as well, ball water is, you know, you need ball water because it's crystal clear and there's no contaminants or anything in there. So we're quite lucky where we are here in, in Canterbury because our water quality is so good. So this hatchery here, we're, we're putting stocks down to hatch out. Uh, and if we have a look under one of these covers, there we go, that's a good example. So we have these hatching baskets here. Uh, and the idea is the, the eggs hatch out and fall through the bottom and any, any eggs that aren't going to hatch out and are dead can just be lifted, yeah, and you oh, can yeah. just, just lift it out. Um, we, yeah, you try and mimic what they're getting out in the wild as much as possible, so if, you know, once an egg hatches out, the alvin just swims to the bottom and gets amongst the rocks and likes to stay in the dark yeah. until it's absorbed quite a bit of its yolk sac, so that's why we keep these covers on. These are our production stocks, so these are the little fish we've just hatched out from the egg um, and they've swum up and they're now actively feeding. Um, so in each of these troughs we'll have about anywhere from 30 to 50,000 what we call fry at this stage. Um, and they're just learning how to feed, how to grow, how to respond to the feed. So we'd feed these fish in here every 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, just little, little amounts of food, very, very fine feed. Uh, and yeah, we just wait until they're outgrown this, this system here and then they can be popped outside in the raceways. So how long do they have to be in here before they get to go yeah, outside? It's about a month after they've hatched. Yeah. Um, it sort of all depends, of course, how many fish you've got per trough as well. So if you've got a few too many, they can go out a little bit earlier. You sort of play it by ear. Is um, it a certain size before they have to go out or a weight? Or? I, I like to pull them out at two grams, just because you can imagine tiny little fish any gap, gaps in those raceways, they'll get around yeah, and, and get out. So it, it, it's really just so we can you know, keep them in their enclosure. When the salmon reach their optimum weight and size, they get pumped into a truck and transported over to Wainui. getting fed once a day and um, they're feeding to satiation so they'll, we've got a camera in there at five metres and um, so as soon as you see pellets, as soon as these guys see pellets come down to five metres on the camera, you'll switch it off and that, that's how you know they're full. Yeah, yeah. And that way you don't, there's still another 10 metres below the camera so they can clean up any of the other feed that drops below yeah. um, before it drops out of the bottom of the net. So, um, at two dollars a kilo for feed, you don't want to be wasting any through the bottom of the net. So, yeah. And uh, is there a special kind of feed you use for these? Uh, yeah, well, we um, we finish our fish on a um, on a lower oil diet because uh, Akaroa salmon's always had a, um, a, a point of difference that um, means the fish have got a lower oil content when you when you eat them. And um, I don't know if you've tasted that. Sometimes you, when you eat a piece of salmon, it can be quite oily at the end of it when you, by the time you've finished eating it. But um, yeah, we like it where it's not quite so oily. And it's uh, much more tasty. And uh, how many fish would actually be in this whole circle? Uh, this circle's got about 16 to 18,000 fish in it. Yeah, so that's a density of about, uh, about seven or eight um, kilos per cubic meter, which is quite a low density relative to other companies and um, uh, some companies will fit up to 25 kilos per cubic metre. So we like to stick with the lower density, it's better for, for the fish health. It's a 
pretty good looking population of fish there. They're, um, the tails are quite nice and big. We found that um, since we've put the fish into the big circles there, they've, um, the tails are much more full and as opposed to when they were in these little cages, they, they got rounded off on the net if they were hitting the net in storms and things like that. The, the waves work on the net. And uh, so yeah, it's quite a good, quite a good outcome of getting these big circles. Obviously, we're in a sort of sheltered harbour, but does the weather sort of play effect? And what about the animals, like seagulls and stuff? Yeah, we do. I mean, we've got a. Um, it's pretty open there, obviously, to the um, southeast, so we get some pretty big swells through. And the tide runs quite, quite well on through here. So it's quite a high energy site, which is, um, which is good for farming. And. Um, yeah, animals wise, we're pretty lucky we don't have seals here. Well, they seem to stay outside the harbour, which is really good. Yeah. At the moment, the visibility in the harbour is not so great, so um, they stay outside. But um, seagulls wise, they're, oh, they're not, they're a bit of a pain at times, but they're, um, you know, they're, we've got bird nets over the cages to stop them getting in and getting the feed. That's, the, I mean, that's really the only thing that's the problem is when they're eating the feed, it's supposed to go into the fish. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. That's bloody good. Thanks, Charles yeah. Farms. No worries. Yeah. See you out there, I suppose. <laughs> Thanks later. Radio, we're off to the factory. Let's go. What are you doing here? Um, I'm pelleting fish. Yeah. yeah. Freshly cut, caught. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, I'm really proud. Yeah, show us how it's done. guys that have just been in there, they were just working yeah. away. Is this the end product? This is the end product. So they were filleting for cold smoke. So, yeah, and goes, as I said, it will go in the brine, go in the dryer, get smoke, and you'll see Steve cutting um, the skin off. So these are the end product. So there's one, two, and everything else. And everything else. Yeah. Done. What's the most, the most popular? Oh, um, our hot smoke. Oh, yeah. well, both to be fair. Cold smoke pieces, and yeah, yeah both. But yeah, it's well maintained, um, and we make sure that our, our customers, rec you know, get what they require. You know, if not, we may have a product that we run out of, and the next following day they'll have it. Yeah. So yeah, but we definitely make our customers happy by. Yeah, yeah. Having that product. Mm. Oh, goodness. Sorry, it's cold. Let's go. Well, thank you for showing us around. You're welcome. Lovely. So we have to go uh, try some uh, salmon, I reckon, on the pizza, I think. So. Well, good luck. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Well, I might just buy some fresh, maybe. Options are endless. Stay tuned, because after the break, we talk to Vince from Ironman 4x4, and we're down at Lincoln University. So Vince, um, suspension units, obviously you cater for everyone? Absolutely, yeah. Um, as I said, the, the Ironman suspension is, is something that we've been doing for over 50 years and it's um, we've got one of the biggest ranges in the world and uh, here we've got a, a cruiser that's um, had a bit of suspension work done to it. Yep. Um, what we've got here is a, is a two inch lift, so basically um, if you're, you're farming or you're off-roading you want to 
you want to have the ability to get round a bit more so a lot of our suspension comes with a, a little bit of an increased height um, so in the front to achieve that we've got a uh, an upgraded front coil so this coil is um, about two inches taller than a standard one um, and then we've got a, an upgraded shock absorber to match that which has uh, got the increased length to match the increased um, coil as well um, this truck's got a ball bar and a winch on it, so what we've also done is we've allowed for that extra weight, which can be up to about 100 kilos, and we've put in a, a front coil to allow for that extra 100 kilos. So that's a heavy duty one in there? That's a heavy duty one there, and yeah, and we can basically match up um, whatever a customer wants, so if, if they're going to put a ball bar and a winch on it, we would obviously allow for that with the spring that we put on it. Um, if it's a standard vehicle and they just um, you know don't have any extra weight, then no problem, we can we can do that. And, and you know, when the customer comes in, and we will go through that whole range of options for them and, and um, talk about what load they're carrying and, and what they intend to do with their truck so we can get the right solution for them. So you're pretty flexible. Absolutely, yeah. If, if you look at our range, it's massive. Um, you know, we could have, say, four different spring options for the front of one Land Cruiser, depending on what weight you want to carry. So, yeah, yeah it is, yeah. Um, and at the back end? At the back end, yeah, we can do exactly the same thing again. Um, so we've got a, a leaf spring in the back of this Land Cruiser. Um, and what we've done is uh, we've put an uprated one in there so it's a, it's a it's a two-stage leaf spring so what it has is the primary stage where you don't have a lot of weight on it and then as weight comes on it goes on to a secondary stage or an override so that there allows us to get a good comfortable ride when we've got no load on it but when we get a load on it we can take the weight up with that second stage in the spring um, and what it also has is a lot of ours tend to have a number of thin leaves which gives a nice progressive ride. Um, the standard or factory suspension on a Land Cruiser tends to have maybe five leaves which are very thick which can hold the weight but um, very hard riding exactly yep. you're onto it so um, what we've gone to like in this one is actually like 11 leaves that are thinner um, and as a result we get a, a better ride um, but also the ability to carry that weight as well and um, so again you know we've got a double cab here if you had a single cab and you were carrying one ton we would go to a heavier spring again if you were driving around the farm with no weight on and you just wanted a nice comfortable ride we could put a, uh, a suspension leaf in that was nice and light um, but um, would give you a good comfortable ride as well so um, and again, yeah, with you know contractors who might carry a ton on the back of their truck, nice heavy duty leaf spring that we can put in there, um, a shock absorber to match it as well, so that'll take the uh, take the weight and and, and um, match the spring we've put in, and bushes and, and things as well, so we can do the whole the whole tailor made. That's it, yeah, and and a huge range of uh, of options in there as well. So cool, cool. Yeah. Oh, if you guys are interested in getting a suspension unit for your vehicles, give the boys. And I'd man the call and they'll sort you out. Um, my name's Kayla McBrarity and I am studying whitetail deer in New Zealand with specific reference to the Wakatipu herd in comparison to the Stewart Island herd. Um, so we're looking at basically limitations to the Wakatipu herd. Uh, they've been around for more than a hundred years and they haven't done particularly well. Um, times have changed where deer are no longer seen as pests so now they are seen as resources which are to be managed um, and with the implementation of the Game Animal Council in 2014 um, working towards bringing parties like the New Zealand Deer Stalkers Association, Department of Conservation, Game Animal Council and locals together to understand the herd and develop a management strategy to improve the herd in the future. It's a doctoral study. Yeah. So really it's just, so it's answering just a question of what is limiting the herd um, in the Wakatipu and then because you've got two populations, so there was nine deer released in the Wakatipu and nine deer released in Stewart Island um, in the same year from the same herd over in New Hampshire. So it's kind of a nice situation because you've got two comparative herds to look at um, and you can test them genetically, we can look at mineral deficiencies, we can look at hunting whether it be illegal hunting or legal hunting. Um, you can also look at pest control operations in the area and um, just nutrition is probably a big one for them as well to look at. It's all of those sorts of things to study. We use trail cameras and bits and bobs that may not have been used previously. We use some bit of new technology instead of walking around <laughs> counting faecal pellets. <laughs> 
wants to hear. <laughs> so, yeah, in terms of the genetics, it should be really interesting, um, given they came from a small number of animals. Have you done any of the genetics yet? Like um, I've only been collecting samples, so it's quite hard to collect samples from the Wakatibu herd when I'm trying not to promote people to hunt it, because we're trying to see the state of the herd beforehand um, so that the management can be put in place. So it's um, kind of a roundabout problem yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I have at the moment. <laughs> and are you, what, what kind of things are you predicting or can you do that in your line of work? Oh, I suppose you can all... hypothesise but you really don't know what's, what's going to happen or what's around the corner, what's going to show up. Do, you, do um, you think that they would have gone off on slightly different tangents, the breeds? Um, you could hope so, uh, but 110 years is that long enough. Um, they certainly are different. The ones on Stewart Island are considerably smaller in body size and um, antler size often as well, um, whereas the ones in Glenorchy are larger in, in, in both of those. So there's phenotypic differences that exist already. Um, whether that's enough to go to a genetic level though, won't know until we do the test. For me, this is kind of just entering the field. Um, so this is how I want to spend my life. I want to study game, animal new game animals in New Zealand, basically. Mm. Don't go anywhere, because after the break, we meet with Barry from the Railway Tavern. What a view. Today with the Boyle River Outdoor Education Centre, we're going to go see what the guys and girls are up to. So apparently uh, this is the only way to get from the other side to the other. So, middle of winter, my hands are freezing, but we're doing alright. Like the test dummy. So Billy, we're under the big trees. What's happening on this side of the camp? Uh, this is what we call uh, Prouty's Landing. It's uh, one of the low rope activities that we've got here. It's, uh, essentially, they've got to get the rope and then they'll be swinging together individually onto this platform. Oh wow. Um, this is stage number two of their challenge where they've got to try and get the rope. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, another team working activity. Uh, no. Oh. Yeah, dangerous. <laughs> so what, so what are ooh, <laughs> what other activities do you have over this side of the? Yeah. Uh, we've got all sorts. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> this loop is not for your foot, but for your knee. When you swing, you can open your leg, and it will pop straight out. Putting my knee in. Okay. Open your leg. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh Paris, oh. you're the man. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, that's right. Just hold on, hold on, jump back. Right there. We're still on the one. Oh, oh. Right. right, side on, side on, side on. Oh, you just flip your legs on. Right in the middle, right in the middle. Okay. Pressure's on. No pressure, Royce. Oh, Jumanji! <laughs> Who said Jumanji? <laughs> okay, stay where you are. Uh, just behind us here we've got the tension traverse. So uh, you've got two people working together to uh, walk out. Um, sort of leaning against each other. Or there's a rope attached to a tree and they're just like walking out using that rope. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a tyre over there. I'm not quite sure what it's called. But uh, you've just got to get your on through it without uh, yeah, winking. Don't, oh, yep. don't give yourself too much force. Um, and there's the log that's going straight across it and uh, essentially got to get the whole team up and over it. Oh, well, yep. Beauty! Yeah. Yeah, big wooden, uh, the big wooden wall we don't use so much. Um, if we do it's for definitely the more senior students um, where the whole team has to get up and over the wall. Um, it's quite a high wall. So yeah, it doesn't look very small at all. <laughs> yeah. like, we did that for staff training uh, a couple of years ago and <laughs> even we found it quite yeah. difficult. And there is a giant's finger 
it's somewhere along behind the wall over there where they got to get a couple of tires up and over it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So uh, lots of different activities around here. It's just a matter of what the group needs as to what we will do and how we run it or how we, how we sort of like focus it for them. Yeah, yeah. Because what would be more sort of trust sort of stuff over here or more teamwork or you sort of tailor make it? To, we, like, we, we tailor all, all courses to what the school's sort of after or what we feel like the group needs more of. Yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> this group here, <laughs> it's all about getting, uh, cooperating and, and talking just nicely just up to one another yeah. um, because like the trust and everything's right up there already. No, I got you. Um, so the swamp activity will be great to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I look forward to it. Don't it was cold and wet and we'd been filming all day so I thought I'd go meet the guys from the railway tavern. Rightio, so we hit the Railway Tavern today, and uh, you're the man who runs the show around here, is that yeah, right? Yeah, at the moment I am anyway. Yeah. So how long have you been here for? Uh, about three and a half years. Yeah. Yeah, Mark yeah. and myself. Yeah, running the show. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, cool. Yeah. And um, I hear there's a, bit, a few famous stories about the old Railway Tavern. Uh, that's, well, it's over a hundred years old, so there's, well, we've been told a few stories that most of them you probably couldn't air on TV, but... <laughs> It was one of trying to get the horse upstairs when it was two story about well, nearly 40 years ago now, but the horse decided halfway up the stairs not to, not to go any further and <laughs> everyone came tumbling down. Oh, <laughs> classic, classic. But nowadays things are a bit more sort of reserved, but... Yeah, uh, a lot more, all these new laws, everything, so everybody's got to be above board and we're, uh, everything's going pretty well though, they haven't really affected us and... We've been really busy in the last couple of years and that's probably continued that way, the way things yeah. are going in Amberley at the moment. Yeah, no, the, the whole town's growing. You know, I've even been uh, down here a few Friday nights and uh, she's a full house. Yeah, so. it's, it's been a full house in the restaurant most nights, even during the week. Yeah. Um, and every, every time you see different people come in and they've been recommended from the garages or the motels and it's just new people gradually moving into the area from Christchurch and it's, it's all good for the town though and yeah, yeah. good for here anyway. <laughs> so with, with the community, are you sort of community focused and stuff Yeah, like? we're, we're really involved with um, a lot of sports teams and kind of community groups in the area. We, uh, we sponsor the, the Amberley Rugby Club, we sponsor the Hurranui Rangers football team, they have three senior teams. So weekends here and training nights during the week, it's it's a full house as well with all those teams and and we're linked in with the the golf club, the Amberley Lions. They we support them quite a bit and they support us. So yeah, we're linked in with a lot of community groups and it's it's all good. It's all give and take and yeah. everybody's pretty happy with each other and you get you give a little and you get quite a bit back. It's yeah, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so the the chef's background, what's the deal with that? Um, Mark used to own the fish and chip shop in Darfield and he won quite a few awards for that, national and regional and I was working in the local pub there and after he sold up we ended up working together and we just decided let's we can do it ourselves. So we bought the railway in Amberley. Oh, uh, here you go. Yeah, and the rest is history. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as they say, as they say. Yeah, we're in the restaurant. Yes. You must have some famous meals around here. Yeah, the ribs and the blue cod are definitely our two signature dishes. Um, we've quite a variety in our menu. There's curry, schnitzel, salmon, a bit of everything, but definitely the ribs and the blue cod. And, and we do the blue cod to take away as well on our fish and chip menu. And that's like our takeaway menu is probably our biggest hit here as well. We're, we're hammered every night for fish and chips to take away. So. Yeah. It's definitely, yeah, we've got a few angles between dining in-house and taking away where we've covered everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, sounds like I might have to try the ribs and maybe even the fish and chips. Yeah, we'll try the ribs now. Mark's cooking them up. Sounds <laughs> good. Oh, well. Look at that. That's impressive. Here we go, guys. Thank you, Enjoy. chef. This looks amazing. Can't wait to dig into these. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. If you guys are keen for a good feed, come to the Railway Tavern, grab a beer, sit down and enjoy. See you guys later.
Well, that's our show on rural New Zealand this week. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Just remember to like us on Facebook, and if you have missed an episode, you can watch it on demand. Catch you guys next time when we go on another amazing adventure. See you then. Thank you.